Imagine we live in a two-dimensional world. That we are just like some character in some comic book. How different would such life be? That flat page is your world? Nobody asking you to change your perspective. Because all you have are just two dimensions. How will we interact each other or can we even interact with each other? Luckily, our world is three-dimensional. We interact with objects of various shapes. Be it a cube or a cork. Today, let us delve into this world of solid and get some of our basic right. talking a lot about two and three dimensions. But what exactly are these dimensions? Imagine a line. This line is made by a point traveling in one direction. There is only one measurable quantity for this line, its length. Therefore, that is our first dimension, length. If this line sweeps a particular distance, we can say that we have swept across an area. Area now has two measurable properties, length and breadth. So our second dimension is breadth. So we have moved in this direction and then in this direction. And by now you have probably understood how this works. So we move our area in this direction. Now our area also has a height. So our third dimension is height. Length, breadth and height are the three dimensions. Are there only three dimensions? Well, mathematically there can be an infinite number of dimensions. We don't really have to go through now. Maybe in a Back to our three dimensions. All three dimensional objects occupy space. The space occupied by an object is called its volume. One question always comes to our mind. When we are asked to find the volume, say my solid is a glass tumbler containing water. So what is the volume in this case? Is it the space occupied by the water or is it the space occupied by the glass? As a matter of fact, hollow object like this tumbler can have two types of volume. Its internal volume and the volume of the material. How much water this tumbler can hold is called the internal volume of the solid. The amount of glass that we used to, to make this tumbler is called volume of the material. And we calculate this by subtracting the internal volume from the external volume. We will now be looking at some standard shapes. Remember how we made a three-dimensional object? We gave a height to an area. So the area you get when you cut perpendicularly is called the cross-sectional area. So say that our cross-section is a square. All sides are equal. If we give it a height equal to the side, then we have made ourselves a cube. If the height is more or less than this height, then we get a solid called a cuboid. So, how do we calculate this quantity called volume? If we take this cross section, the space occupied by the cross section is, is its area. If you stack more such areas on top of each other, then we get a solid. Therefore, volume or the space occupied by the solid will be equal to the value of one cross sectional area into 
height of the object. So for our cube, cross-sectional area is the square of area side square. Height is equal to side. So volume is side into side square that is equal to side cube. For our cuboid, the cross-sectional area is area of the rectangle that is L into B. Multiply that with the height and we get L into B into H. So I wouldn't have to tell you that if our cross-sectional area is a circle of area pi r square, then our solid would be a cylinder and volume will be pi r square h. See, if you try to understand math like this, then you will no longer have to work for maths. So, if we have really understood how calculating the area works, then this next activity will get to you easy. Let us imagine a cylinder. Instead of adding up area of each stacked circle, if we add up the perimeter of each circle, then we get not the volume but the curved surface area. Curved surface area is the area of the outer surface of the cylinder. Instead of a cylinder, if we had a cube or cuboid, say like a room, then we would have got the area of four wall of the room. Let us try to picturize what area of four walls is. This is our room. We have a length, breadth and a height. So we open this room of ours and separate each of its four walls. Then the opened up room will look like 1, 2, 3, 4. Let us find area of each wall. Now to find the area of the four walls, we just have to add all the individual areas. So the area is 2 into LH plus BH. So in a simpler way, it is the perimeter of each cross-sectional area in the height. If you have understood this, then area of curl surface of a cylinder will be hard at all for you to find out. It will be the circumference of cross-sectional area 2 pi r into height. Another important property of a solid is its total surface area. As the name suggests, the total surface area is the area of all the surfaces. Since we already have the area of four walls, we just need to add the area of the roof and area of the floor. Area of the roof is equal to area of the floor, which is equal to L into B. Therefore, total surface area of a cuboid is 2 into LH plus BH plus 2LB, which is equal to 2 into LH plus BH plus LB. For a cube, all surfaces have same area side square and we have six such sides. So, the total surface area of a cube is 6 into side square. So, you see how you are making formula for yourself? That is the magic when you understand that. Today, we have only seen 3D objects which have a uniform cross-sectional area. But what about shapes like cones or sphere whose cross-sectional area keeps changing? Well, we cover that soon in the video to come. So till then, celebrate math around you. Happy learning!